Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. We're going to talk about listening versus speaking. Now, if you study the most successful salespeople, you will learn that there is an art involved. And if you often study, for example, influential leaders who move people and have people following them, there's an art involved as well. So if you think about leaders, there's several different types of leaders, which was what we're talking about here. One leader is a type of leader who uses their authority to move people around. They're very bossy. But then you have the other type of leader who gains trust from people and people are willing to move because they trust that leader and they're using their influence rather than their authority. So that's the type of leader that we're talking about here. If you study counselors and their ability to help people pinpoint roadblocks and get them to the point of healing fast, you will also see this art in action. It's the art of listening, not speaking, but listening. Now, this is often very tough because in our society that is constantly talking, we're used to people speaking and we're used to telling people why did they need this or why they need that. Or, or whatever, especially if your personality type is extroverted. Now, if you're an introvert, you often have somewhat of an advantage here because you're constantly listening internally and you're waiting before you're speaking. So you're a little bit of ahead of the curve here. So what I'm trying to get at here is that in terms of the survey funnel, we will be listening. So regardless, Whatever your personality type doesn't matter. Regardless, the point is there's a time to listen and there's a time to speak. When it comes to survey funnels, listening is crucial. And you'll see in just a minute why that is the case. When you first gather the data, you're trying to understand the needs of your prospect. So you need to clearly pinpoint what makes them buy. Now, if you were in speaking mode, you would assume people had specific needs and based on those assumptions you would create your funnel now bear in mind that that is a dangerous situation to be in because a lot of times we really don't know what our prospects and our buyers are really thinking and a lot of times they don't even know either but it's a matter of asking them questions getting the right data and then essentially figuring out based on that data what they want so hopefully that makes sense, listening versus speaking. So if you think about a counselor, a lot of times they'll sit in a room and they'll listen to what you have to say. Now they'll ask the right questions, but they will get you to answer. And a lot of times, a lot of people will say, why am I paying for a counselor? Why am I paying to go to somebody for them just to listen? Well, the reality is that it's not just that. They are asking the correct questions which in this case, as a survey funnel, you'll be asking the right questions. And we'll give you some example of questions that you can ask. And what that does is it helps the person figure out essentially why they need something. What is the source of their pain? What is essentially that looks like? And that's what we're trying to do in this case. So you could think of it as a survey funnel. You could think of it as a essentially a counseling funnel, but that's the goal is at the end of the day, if you help somebody figure out what is blocking them, why they do what they do, they will be forever grateful to you and they'll eventually buy your products if that makes sense. So if you sit down with three or more prospects, so let's say you're having a counseling session and you sit with three of them one-on-one -on -one, and you ask them the same questions. You will often find that there are very different reasons why they are interested in your product. And in just a minute, I'm gonna use some examples and to reveal to you how that works. So through this discovery process, you're gonna be learning things that you've never heard before. Things that you assumed were true, but it was totally the opposite. Now, oftentimes you'd even have ideas, like I said, assumptions which are entirely wrong. Assumptions are very, very dangerous because that can get you into thinking that people like something, that you know better, 
And just because you know the product and service really well, we found over the years that most people that have products and services don't even realize what the main reason why people buy. They think they know, even a lot of sales people, they think they know, but they don't. That's why jumping ahead and assuming why people buy is ineffective. And that is why we call that speaking before listening. So you're jumping ahead, you're speaking for the person, assuming that you know what's in their mind instead of sitting down and listening. So I wanted you to understand that concept because it's a very opposite thinking in our society. So hence listening before speaking is crucial in this case. Now to put things into perspective, imagine if you stick to your assumptions, you speak without listening first, you'll create a whole funnel. You'll spend months, two months, three months setting up that funnel, mind mapping it out. And then you wonder why is no one buying? It's frustrating, right? You spend all that time and then you realize that nobody is buying. So this is a typical mistake and we don't want you to make an ineffective funnel either. So how does this look in practical terms? Well, you could sit down with three or more prospects and ask them these questions that we're about to share with you in the future videos. So we're not going to talk about all the questions in this video. We're just going to talk about them in the future videos. Or you can simply create a survey for the purpose of gathering data and market research. So you initially create the survey, you gather the data, and based on that, then you create another survey or quiz or whatever to get them through your funnel. So it's a two part process. So keep in mind that this is not to be confused, like I said, with the survey that you're going to be using later in the actual funnel to essentially qualify the prospect to become a lead. That's not what we're going to talk about. We're talking about right now gathering the right data, either through surveys or through sitting down on a one-on-one, -on -one essentially counseling session with your prospect. So it is first and foremost to listen and get the right data. Now, in order to create the survey form, there are plenty of survey web applications out there for you to use. And some of those include surveymonkey.com and wufu.com. And we'll tell you why we chose these later down the road. There's a reason why we're not utilizing all the web survey forms out there. And that's because we're gonna be using conditional rules. Now, does it make sense right now? It's okay. We're going to talk about that later down the road. All right. So let's move on to video number three.